where one cannot exist in his world. Where we It's a rest! In the rest! <laughs> Viewer, guess what game we're playing? <laughs> well, we're gonna see just how much the gameplay holds up today on a brand new episode of Oblivious Casuals. On today's episode of Oblivious Casuals, the team plays Sonic 06. So we visit the old classic from 2006. <laughs> Will it hold up the way it did in 2006? Join us as we find out today on Oblivious Casuals. What's really funny is that you know, I should preface this episode by saying that I'm a gigantic Sonic nerd. I love Sonic. I grew up reading the comics, watching the shows, playing all the games, defending him on online forums, all that jazz. So before I say all of the outlandish things about Sonic today, I want that to be the preface. Um, he, will, he will type up a 500-word essay as to why you're wrong and he's right about Sonic. Yeah. And he won't bat an eye. I mean, look at the graphics on this cutscene. The this graphics is, on this cutscene are, like, actually gorgeous. impressive. <laughs> they put, like, the entire budget into this one cutscene. It's it looks really Like, nice. even by today's standards, if this shipped as, like, a AAA title today, this cutscene would still be, like... It looks better damn. than some pre-rendered cutscenes I see now, yeah. <laughs> yeah, like, they put it's, their whole, like, soul into it. And when I see this, I think Sonic the Hedgehog. You got a tear coming up. You oh, can't. No. You can't cry. A little foreshadowing you there. Can't Don't cry. Cry, you fucking idiot. I always cry whenever fire's that close to my eyes. Like burns them. I don't understand how she doesn't cry here. If you don't know the story to Sonic 06, that doesn't really make any sense to you yet, but it will. There's a very active subsection of the Sonic community. Uh, for years, I've been a part of a. I've been, you know, sheltered into believing that the whole Sonic community was disappointed with this game. But there's a humongous section of the Sonic fandom that really rigorously defends this game really they, they think the that the gameplay is all right and that the story is like brilliant like they think I, that it's like incredible human holistic and I, I know there are people who will defend the shadow and silver storylines as like ironic unironically really good but yeah i didn't know the whole the, really even the sonic episode they'll be like yeah like the whole thing and wow. i mean there's like remakes to make it like smoother and jazz which is great oh, yeah. but like people defend like this like what we're about to play there are thousands of people who think that this is good this is what jim carrey's eggman will look like by the third sonic movie i'm the bad guy in the video game <laughs> This is what Michael Afton looked like by the seventh <laughs> it's, William, it's William Afton, my friend. I'm going to take you and put you in one of my animatronics. I always come back. <laughs> That's what it looks like he's saying with his arm <laughs> like, If I always come, come this way to my animatronics. <laughs> this is actually just a FNAF prequel. <laughs> this Whoa, is Claire Freddy it's coming purple into the guy. <laughs> Whoa! Oh yeah, Whoa, yeah, that's so easy. It's easy to mistake. Yeah, of course. <laughs> Gregory, I will save you. <laughs> After them, Bonnie, Chica, Foxy. <laughs> you ever see the Simpsons go to uh, Five Nights at Freddy's? <laughs> Is that a real thing? That's a real thing. Oh my god. Oh my god. <laughs> yeah, he, he looks into a. Homer looks at the newspaper. He's like, Five Nights at Freddy's help wanted, and Marty. <laughs> He's like, I don't know, Homer. And then he gets jump scared by Fox. <laughs> and they explode. <laughs> oh my gosh. Okay. See, here's where oh, I... Oh, see, it's just like the... <laughs> it's just like the original cut. It just, it looks, like, so good. Like, the first cutscene is just incredible. That This is just the most jarring thing ever. Oh, that was quick. Thank God. Yeah, for real. I was worried I was going to play this game. Ha, that's a funny okay? joke that no one's ever made before. <laughs> The way he and catches us always like... gets me. <laughs> <laughs> He's like... He didn't have to like move his arm out all. He just like held his hand out and like teleported into his hand. At least Naughty tank the free rates. See, he's... Eggman was very anti-Semitic just then. I honestly really do like the four kids cast for Sonic. Like, I think they do a great job. Jason Griffith is honestly like probably my favorite Sonic. And I didn't grow up with Sonic, so that's not nostalgia talking. I just genuinely like him. Yeah, he does a great job. And, I uh, did grow up with Sonic. I still think he's my favorite. And he did a fantastic job in the condom commercial uh, where he played Sonic the Hedgehog. He sounded just like Sonic in that commercial. I wear condoms because they're the safe thing to do. 
It's like a Sonic says, but... Every time I'm railing Amy Rose, you know I have to be properly protected. Okay. Hey, don't you have that already? That's not how capitalism works. <laughs> I buy... I spend... You don't ask questions. Oh, God. Okay. You got it. First try. Oh, my God. <laughs> Is it supposed to usually do that? I don't remember. It always looks like that. I remember playing this as a kid and it still looked like that. <laughs> well, I think we're at the point in the video where we should talk about Sonic's many endeavors and uh, epic oh adventures. <laughs> Alright, so um, when I was a kid, I was, um, I was really big into the Sonic Archie series. And if you, don't, if you haven't heard of it, um, since... Oh, God. <laughs> from 1993 until I think it was like 20... 15 ish like around 2015 sonic ha sega had like a deal with like archie comics like the ones that did like the whole betty and veronica shit that like made riverdale all that jazz they had a deal with sega so they produced sonic comics for like years like they ended off by the time the series ended there was th about 300 issues in the mainline series and they had a whole like spin-off series called sonic universe that had over 100 issues and it would like explore like the universe and things like that. For a while, the main writer for the Archie Sonic comics was a guy named Ken Penders, and he was just just a insane guy. Uh, he essentially wrote like insane fan fiction, <laughs> but he was the main writer of the official Sonic the Hedgehog comic. And so that's why you're all like that. <laughs> yeah, essentially. Like, you could make the argument that either he was pandering towards the already weird fan base, or he's kind of the reason the fan base is so weird. So take your own gamer theory on that. <laughs> um, oh, shit. <laughs> nice. So, I love this game. If you ever wondered why, like, like, the comic stuff has never, like, winded up in, like, mainstream Sonic, it's because Ken Penders made it so weird. <laughs> in the official Sonic timeline, the reason that Sonic and his friends are weird anthropomorphic animals and they live with humans, like in this game and in Sonic Adventure and all that jazz, is because in the 21st century, I gotta, I pulled up the page so that I don't get the name wrong. Sometime in the 21st century, um, the human race is visited by an alien species called the Zorda. And... Uh, the Zorda sent an ambassador to Earth to just, like, make contact with them because it's just, like, a typical, like, they're a, they're a superior alien race. The, the, gra the <laughs> physics in this are really good. <laughs> they're, like, a superior alien race, so they reach out to the humans. But the humans capture the Zorda ambassador, and no joke, they dissect the ambassador and, like, treat it like a gross little alien, and so the Zorda get pissed off. And so they nuke all of Earth with stuff they call gene bombs. And so a couple of human settlements like create factions that are able to survive the gene bombs, but the rest of the Earth is like decimated, like it's humongous genocide. And over the course of the next like God. couple thousand years, um, the DNA of like the humans that died and aliens that died mushes together like an evolution kind of deal for like a couple thousand years. So by the time the events of Sonic take place, I think we're in like the 3000s technically. Oh god. Um and yeah, so over the course of thousands of years, first the echidnas sprout up and they're kind of like the Greeks of the new age because like <laughs> like the echidnas are like they like create like technical wonders and they harness the power of the master emerald and there's this whole deal with like some guy becoming like a master emerald god called Enerjack and he like kills a bunch of guys. It's crazy. And so he's permanently a green Sonic with scars across his chest, and he wears sunglasses and a jacket with flames on it. <laughs> and his name is called Scourge the Hedgehog. And the first thing Scourge the Hedgehog does is he goes to Sonic's dementia and he steals Sonic's girlfriend. Here's the thing about Sonic's girlfriend at the time. Sonic's girlfriend was a fox named Fiona. Now, Fiona has quite the Fiona. backstory. Because Fiona originally was a robot that Eggman made to seduce Tails and try to get Tails into Wait. one of his roboticizers to make Tails a robot. 
But apparently they make it canon that Fiona was based off a real person or some shit. What? And so Fiona the real like GLaDOS? person. Yeah, like Fiona the real fox uh, ends up joining like Sonic's like crew and they get together. Um, and then Sonic and Tails like kind of fight over who gets to have her. And then Scourge ends up stealing her and she becomes a bad guy for the rest of the series. It's just a... It's a lot. <laughs> oh my god. Yeah. That's... Well, well, that's... That's certainly an Archie comic series if I ever knew one. Yeah. <laughs>